Hi, I'm Ed Kane. Welcome back to the continuing discussion on trace minerals and toxic heavy metals. I'm CEO of BodyBio. I found our taste testing program for trace minerals close to 30 years ago. It was developed by a brilliant scientist from Spokane who had an unusual insight into mineral function and mineral interactions. Unfortunately, he's no longer with us. But with his help, we developed the Body Bio Mineral Test Kit, which we use today to safely raise the essential trace minerals in our body. The important minerals in the test kit are potassium, zinc, magnesium, copper, chromium, manganese, selenium, molybdenum, and iodine. Testing each mineral using our own sense of taste lets us effectively do it ourselves. Simply taste each mineral and rate it. There are seven categories from sweet, which is a one, to number seven, which is really bad. Individually, they are sweet, pleasant, no taste at all. Hmm, I think I taste something. So, so, don't like, and the last one, seven, yuck, really bad. All you have to do is pick a number. Then you take each of the minerals with the low numbers, numbers one, two, and three, and four, and leave out the high numbers, five, six, and seven. In effect, you take the ones you like and don't take the ones you don't like. Once you test and pick a number, you know if you need it or not, and can start making your special mix of the minerals you need. By leaving out the ones with the high numbers, your body is essentially guiding you as to which ones to avoid. And knowing which ones not to take is a big deal. With a number for each one, you can now record it. Your numbers describe which ones you need and which ones you don't. You can even share your results and track them with your doctor. Together, you can manage a vital part of your health. The Body Biomineral Test Kit is simple and effective. In fact, we know of no other way to do it. The do-it-yourself part absolutely fascinated me. When I started on the program, my health was in such a low state, it took me two and a half years before I could taste them all. But I started feeling better almost immediately. And that was back in 1984, almost 30 years ago. Sticking with it was one of the best things I could have done because of the positive reaction the trace minerals had on heavy metals. But none of us had a clue about that at that time. The self-administering concept just struck me, and I was determined to taste them all, which I did eventually. But getting my health back was the best journey I could ever have taken. I'm 85, and I work every day, and the liquid minerals are absolutely one of the chief reasons. Could be the main one. The first thing I did was to try eating things I had avoided for years. I had been off dairy for a long time, so I tried eating yogurt. That went so well, I started making my own, 14 quarts at a time. I turned the kitchen into a yogurt factory. Had to give most of it away. There were a number of significant health changes, however. Most were either invisible or impossible to track. Health improvements seemed to appear out of nowhere, like memory, which came back. But most were subtle and gradual. I could never really connect the dots and provide a rational answer. For me, there were four that were significant. One was eyesight, two was back pain, three, voice change, and of course, number four concerning heavy metals, which is far and away the most important because heavy metals today are literally a plague on the health of our society and it's worldwide. Number one, eyesight. I noticed things were clearer, more distinct, like the leaves and branches right by my house. I could make out more details. I did not lose my astigmatism. You can't change the shape of your eyeball by taking minerals. But I did enjoy better clarity, even distance improved. Over the years, our doctor have put thousands of patients on the same mineral test kit and recorded the same change in eyesight. You can think of it as getting a higher pixel count. More resolution just means more information. Number two, backaches. I cannot provide much of an answer for that one, except that it was also one that a lot of other patients reported as well. And some were even friends of mine that said the same thing. However, number three was a doozy. My voice changed. It went up an octave. I never talked about it much. Who's going to believe it? And I was never comfortable trying to explain it. It was too weird. 
I'm Jewish and attend services regularly. At least I did then because our rabbi was such a marvelous guy and I was also president of our synagogue. Anyway, males reaching puberty usually lose their ability to hold some notes. Well, guess what? That came back. When you sing the same hymns year after year, you pretty well know which notes you can't reach anymore. It's the same in all religions. That changed and I started warbling away like I was on stage. So guess what? My rabbi put me on stage and for several years I was called up to sing the Kiddush at the end of the services. If you want an explanation for that one, you'll have to ask a higher authority. Minerals are essential for all life on Earth. Wherever there's a crack in the floor of the ocean, the Earth releases a profusion of minerals, and with it, a profusion of life starting with plankton, which is food for krill, sardines, herring, and all ocean life, up to the whales. Some of the plankton blooms in the oceans are so large they are visible from space. On land, minerals are ground down by glacial ice or blown over the land by strong desert winds and taken up by the roots of plants. We get our minerals either directly from plants or indirectly by eating the animals that eat the plants. Grazing animals eat the grasses and leaves to get their minerals. Their eating equipment is neatly packaged in front of their nose. They just stick their head down where the food is. It's their dining room. When they see some grass that looks good, they munch away. They do their analysis continuously with every bite. And for the record, the ones that taste good are the ones that have the minerals they need. Their taste buds and their sense of smell sends the information up to their brain for a decision, and it all happens in a blink. That intelligence is innate. They're born with it. We are too. We used to do that for everything we ate ages ago, but no more. Today, we let the food processors like General Foods or Kellogg's or McDonald's do it for us. I don't have to tell you what's wrong with that picture. The value of chasing down a zebra or antelope, besides avoiding starvation, was that we received the benefits of a lifetime of their continuous analysis. They did the work, and we got our mineral balance like on a silver platter. All we had to do was catch one, which was no small feat. But somehow we did it, and we did it for thousands and thousands of years. Eating a good diet won't cut it because the minerals are no longer there. The vegetables look good, but taste flat. And the livestock raised today is focused on weight gain, not quality. Mineral depletion is made much more difficult because large farming is addicted to the grains, which minimize crop rotation. Rotating crops help to replace the missing minerals. It allowed the soil to return to a healthier state. But that's not happening and most likely will stay that way. We know minerals are primary. They're not just important, they're essential. Essential means that the body needs them, but our cells cannot produce them. Whether it's minerals, vitamins, or essential fats, it's up to us to come up with a way, an intelligent way, to get the ones we need. This is one of the main subjects we teach our doctors at our Body Bio PK protocol lectures. To get our mineral base up to a healthy state, we must do exactly like the grazers. Sample the minerals one by one and take only the ones that our taste buds approve of. Our senses are there waiting to help. We don't know exactly how. Science has yet to figure that one out. But that system was designed and evolved for all life on the planet. Our cells had to have a way to tell good from bad because there's a lot of bad stuff out there that might look good but isn't. If we could not tell which, we would not be here. Without question, one of the chief values of raising your mineral base is the influence good minerals have on the bad heavy metals, mercury, lead, nickel, cadmium, arsenic, all of them. Clearing them out of the body is a big deal, a very big deal, and nobody has a handle on that. I know today that that was my problem. I had a mouthful of amalgam fillings, and I was sure that mercury was doing me in but at that time, all I could do was assume it. Even if I knew absolutely what course could I take, nothing exists in standard or complementary medical care to address the problem. And there are a lot of people out there floating in that same boat today. Dr. D might still be struggling trying to get the mercury out if he hadn't called me and be willing to jump in and try it himself. My wife Patricia helped me enormously. She opened doors of knowledge I would never have found. 
doors which changed my life and which include the trace minerals. We never really knew why my health nosedived, never put the pieces together until I dug into the background for this video you're now listening to. I certainly hope it finds its way to others that are struggling like I was. The essential value of life's minerals are known, but how and why they work is one of the least understood of all the sciences. We know they're essential. If some of the ones we need are not there, if that supply is hindered in any way, we are simply incomplete. If a lot of them are missing, so are we. We are on our way out of here. And since my time is up, so am I. You can learn more details at bodybio.com, click on liquid minerals, or just go to the next video, Heavy Metals 3. Thank you very much for listening.